Welcome to Audio Fundamentals Episode 3. Today we are going to explore simple and complex waves and two methods of seeing sound. First let's take a look at the simplest possible form of sound wave, the sine wave. This is an example of simple harmonic motion and if you were to graph in mathematics the function of the sine, you would get this shape of a wave. It's also the type of movement that pendulums move in. If you were to graph over time the position of a large pendulum, you'd end up with a sine wave with a relatively low frequency. If you graphed the movement of a smaller pendulum, you'd see it was moving faster side to side, and so you'd get a graph of a sine wave with a higher frequency. It's moving faster, so it's crossing back and forth more often, thus higher frequency. Simple harmonic motion is the most basic vibration that you can have, or fluctuation in air pressure, any kind of motion of a pendulum or of a wave. It's characterized by two main attributes. One is amplitude, and the other is frequency, and we've seen those a little bit before. Amplitude being usually described as volume, and frequency being usually described as pitch. If you have a larger mass involved, and that could be a larger musical instrument, such as a bass versus a guitar or a tuba versus a trumpet, you'll generally find these three things. It's usually harder to start, it'll vibrate at a lower frequency, and it's harder to stop. It'll tend to continue longer. With a smaller mass, just the opposite is true. It's easier to start and stop, and it'll tend to vibrate at a higher frequency. So let's just check our vocabulary here. We've got the sine wave, which is a wave that moves in simple harmonic motion. It's a graph of the mathematical sine function. Amplitude, which is the amount of motion or volume. Frequency, which is how often the wave goes back and forth. And of course, cycles per second, which is hertz or what we measure frequency in. In general, a complex wave is any wave shape made from more than one simple sine wave. There's more to this than it might sound like, and we'll get to that in a moment. We're going to call one single sine wave ingredient a partial. Partials can be harmonic or non-harmonic to each other. As you may have seen in earlier videos, if you have sine waves at frequencies that are mathematically related, such as they are all multiples of the same number or of each other, they tend to sound more like they belong together harmonically. Non-harmonic partials are partials whose frequencies are not mathematically related to each other. Here's how waves combine, as you can see in a graph. On top we have a 100 hertz wave. And now we have a 1000 hertz wave. Now a beginner might think that they combine like this, but that's not the case as you would have seen in the previous video. The way they actually combine looks like this. You can see an example of this in the real world using pendulums. Let's say that we have two different waves at different frequencies. That's like having the pendulums tied together like so. If we have them both going at the same time, You'll see that sometimes they work together and other times they fight each other. And if you look at the movement of the small one, that is basically what you would see on the oscilloscope. So sometimes it's exaggerating the motion of the large one and other times it fights against it and you'll see that it makes these patterns like you see in the waveform. For real world sounds like voices or acoustic instruments, cars going by, anything like that, those are also made of sine wave ingredients. The problem is it's very difficult to break them down, such as the previous example with just a 100 hertz wave and a 1000 hertz wave. In fact, most complex sounds, even fairly simple sounding ones, have thousands of fragments of ingredients, partials coming and going every split second. And each of those thousands of ingredients have different frequencies and different amplitudes, and they have different phase, which is the relative timing of two waves. You can get a rough idea of what ingredients are in a complex sound by using a spectrum analyzer. The spectrum analyzer is one of two major ways that we use graphs to see sound. The first and most common one is the oscilloscope view, which is the waveform shape that you would see in most audio software, and that is just a regular plot 
of air pressure change over time, or voltage change, or the numbers in samples. Here's an example of a live oscilloscope. And here's a typical oscilloscope view that you would see as a waveform in an audio editor. The spectrum analyzer is an attempt to figure out what ingredients or partials are in a complex wave. This is what a spectrum analyzer looks like. It shows you the relative balance of sine wave ingredients from low on the left to high on the right. Extremely low bass sounds are shown up for the to the left, whereas higher sounds end up on the right. It takes much more computer power to calculate this than the oscilloscope view. And there are many different ways you can represent the spectrum view. Some use colors, others use a moving graph, but all of them represent in some way amount of a given frequency over time. So you can see why the 2D view here uses colors, because there's no other way to represent what's essentially a three-dimensional graph in an easy horizontal format. You might also see what's called a waterfall plot, which is an attempt to take this moving view and put it into a single picture graph. 